You guys are being live broadcast. Did you know this, right? <laughs> Today's service starts halfway through the first song. <laughs> well, good morning, True North family, and good afternoon to those who will join you online that later. Uh, we want to welcome you here this morning. We're glad you chose to worship with us, and we'll begin our service here with Our God Saves. Pastor Mike does not have a large print Bible because I asked him for one this morning because I guess morning eyes are not as good as the rest of the day eyes. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. And again, they shouted, Hallelujah, the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. And then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. 
let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready.
Thank you, worship team. Good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone. Thank you to those that are joining us online as well. It's always great to connect with you through either you watching it this afternoon or throughout the week. Uh, just a couple of announcements to draw to your attention, I guess. Uh, next Sunday, Mike and Melanie Waddell are going to be with us. They are our CBM missionaries that are supposed to be in the Philippines. And uh, they, of course, had to come home in the beginning of the pandemic. They thought they were going to wait it out. And then as everything just globally got worse and worse, they had to come back home. Uh, so we're going to be doing something probably in the afternoon with them. Uh, they just wanted uh, just a different format instead of just uh, here in the service, just to be able to sit around somewhere and so just have a little more informal gathering with them. So I've got to work out some details for that. But that is coming up next Sunday afternoon. We're going to meet with them. And uh, so uh, that'll be a, a good time to connect. And also just be in prayer for our boards as well. Our board of deacons are going to meet on October 1st, and then our uh, board is going to be meeting, our other board will be meeting a little bit later in October. And just to evaluate everything that we have been doing since uh, we've come back to in-person services and also looking at the ministry of the church, uh, when to open facilities and to what uh, what extent and all those sorts of stuff that we need to continually be looking at and all those sorts of things. So please be in prayer for our leadership as we continue to go through this time and we certainly appreciate uh, them as they lead. As we come to the word this morning, so last uh, Sunday we celebrated, uh, anyone remember where we, what we celebrated last week? Rosh Hashanah, which is New Year. Happy New Year, yeah. So in, in, in the Jewish calendar, they have some different times of celebrating the year, but this is their big New Year, and that takes place about 10 days before, well, yesterday. Uh, yesterday was Yom Kippur, which is the holiest of, of days in the Jewish calendar that they celebrate, and that is Yom is day, Kippur is atonement, the day of atonement. And so uh, this was their, their big celebration yesterday. So at Christmas time, you know, we always, for Christmas Eve, we always prepare for full churches. Well, Yom Kippur, they prepare for full synagogues. So that's kind of their uh, celebration to come together. And, uh, and so uh, we were looking at that last week. We were looking at their New Year's celebration and just the, the idea behind it of celebrating life and also uh, repentance, so it is taking a self-inventory of what is going on in their life and what they need to repent of, but in a positive way. And so it is, it is in preparation for what we are going to look at today. And so you were to do your homework as well and look again at your own heart and your own life and to see maybe where there are some areas that, that need to, to change and repentance is turning. And we're going to look at that in a minute here as well. And so that leads them, so once you kind of acknowledge that there are things in your life that are not as they ought to be, it makes it a little easier to accept and to celebrate what we're going to look at today, the Day of Atonement. And so um, I'm not going to get into all the details of the Day of Atonement, but uh, if you want to read about uh, the, the first one that the instructions is given there, Leviticus 16 uh, is given to the nation of Israel and its instructions to Moses and Aaron and how that first day of atonement was to go for them. And, uh, and from there it set up this yearly tradition of bringing in the sacrifice. Atonement is to make amends or to make peace, um, uh, to right a wrong, to repair relationships, so things like that. And it was the instructions to the nation how to do this. And so the first ones in Leviticus 16 are given to Aaron. And he was the high priest. And what he was to do on that day, of course, he was to, to cleanse himself. And he was to take a bull and sacrifice that for his own sin offering. And then once that was done, uh, a couple of goats were selected from, the, from uh, a flock. And so it would be the best of the goats that could be there. Lots were cast. And one would be sacrificed for the nation of Israel. And the other would become a scapegoat. Where we get the whole idea of a scapegoat. So that first one was sacrificed, the blood was taken in and sprinkled on the mercy seat and the altar for the nation of Israel because blood represents life and life needs to be given for the payment of sin. And then we have the scapegoat. And Aaron was to go to that goat, place his hands on that goat and confess the sins of the nation. And that goat was taken by somebody else, they were led outside of the camp, out to the wilderness and that goat symbolically 
took the sins away from the camp. Usually they would tie a red string on the goat. And uh, fun fact, I guess, I don't know how fun it is. Later on, they developed the custom that they would take the goat to the cliff and push it off. I'm guessing that at some point, that goat that was led outside the camp, the guy didn't do his job very well and somehow it found its way back in. So you can imagine uh, how, the, how these people would feel out in the wilderness and all of a sudden the goat with all their sins came back into camp. They're like, well, we'll we're going to fix that next Yom Kippur. <laughs> you know? Anyway, that's just a fun fact for you. <laughs> But it's, it, it, it's such a powerful day because it was the day that, that all the, the, the sins of, of, the, of the year, really, um, past were paid for for them. Now, again, we looked at repentance last week. And if you were in the nation of Israel, the only way that your sins were, were paid for is if you had that spirit of repentance. It wasn't just, you know, just because you, you got to get a jail card free, right, from Monopoly there. It, you had to play your role in repenting as well with everybody else. But the whole nation was in this mode of repentance and sacrifice and really processing the, the gravity of their brokenness and their sin in the world. And so it's a big day. Also, foreshadowing the need for the Messiah, for Jesus. And we see that from day one, from the time in the garden when we looked at last week when humanity was created, Adam and Eve, and that relationship was broken. And since then, they needed to repair that relationship, and life had to be given to pay for the sin. And every year, the magnitude of this would just grow and grow and grow. And then we have Jesus. So this morning, as we reflect upon, uh, you know, the, the Jewish nation celebrating Yom Kippur, I want to look at 1 John chapter 1. And I want to reflect upon what we looked at last week and also to this week as well, because they really tie in well together for us, and Jesus fulfilling uh, the, the, the need of, of a final sacrifice for the sin of the world. So in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, and this is uh, John's later letters, he probably wrote them around 100 uh, AD, so uh, you know, he was getting uh, older and reflecting upon things and things like that, and so this, these are wonderful letters that, that he uh, was led by the Spirit to, to write to us. And he said, this is a message we have heard from him and declared to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. So I just want to stop there. So last week we, we looked at that, that whole idea of reflecting upon ourselves and, and realizing, you know, the, you know, who we truly are and maybe those fatal flaws that are within us. And so John is really reflecting on this, you know, if we, if we claim to have fellowship with the Lord and yet we walk in darkness, so we are choosing to continue to live a life that doesn't honor the Lord. Lord, then we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, verse 7 says, if we walk in the light and he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And so when we turn from darkness into the light, we repent. That's the whole meaning of repent. Then we walk in fellowship. Relationship is restored and the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Verse 8 if we claim to be without sin. So when you did your homework this past week, if you did it, <laughs> you know, if you chose to say, God, search my heart, and if there be any wicked way within me, if there is any way, you know, show it to me. And if you're like, nope, we're good, okay, all right, that's great, thanks God, you know, then you gotta read this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. I don't think John is coming down hard on us there. He's just saying, let's be honest with who we are. Let's just be honest. And he didn't even have Twitter or Facebook to back this up. No social media to prove his point. If we confess our sin. Isn't this beautiful? 
He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let's just soak that in. So last week was to look at all those things that, that may be within us and to repent of them, to confess them. And here we say, if we confess our sins, John reminds us that Jesus is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. By the way, when you read Leviticus 16, blood is seen as a detergent. It cleanses. They would, they would sprinkle it on the mercy seat. They would rub it on the, the horns of the altar. You can read through and see in the tabernacle how it was used to cleanse things. It was, it was better than Tide, right? And, uh, and, and, and here John is, is, is saying that as well. It purifies purifies us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Then he writes this in chapter 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So we have an advocate. We have someone who represents us to the Father. He is the atoning sacrifice. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. And so here we have in the book of Leviticus, the, 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 you see the, the gravity of our sin, our brokenness, that every year this would need to be done. And there were sin offerings and other offerings that were in sacrifices that were made throughout the calendar as well. But for them, you know, this was their day to select those goats, to bring them in, and sacrifice one, and the sins would be uh, on the other. But here Jesus, or, uh, John is saying that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He died once for all. And, uh, and it was completed, it was fulfilled. But not only for ours, but for the sins of the world. And again, it's the same idea that we see in the Old Testament, that is for anybody that would choose to repent of their sin, that the sacrifice would cover their sin for. And that's what we see here as well. And it's this amazing image that Jesus would fulfill that need for a yearly sacrifice. And really, those two goats symbolically represented in Christ. Because you think of what took place with Jesus and the judgment that was placed upon him and the brutality at the hands of humanity that were placed upon him. That every time he was beaten and slapped and whipped, that they were transferring the sins of all humanity upon him. Beaten. And then the life drained from him on the cross. That the sacrifice was made. But the power of Jesus, that as on that third day that he would rise again, demonstrating that he was the one that can complete the sacrifice once and for all. That his life given was for all who will confess, repent, and turn to him. And it's an amazing piece of scripture that John talks about here. And for us, as we reflected last week and even the week before, we looked at the power of relationship. And last week, talking about the need to repent and to turn and to follow Jesus and to see that he is willing that anybody who turns to him and believes that he is the atoning sacrifice for them, that his blood cleanses them from all unrighteousness and that they are forgiven of their sin and relationship is restored. And something to be celebrated each and every day we live as we follow Jesus. And as we walk in this world and we see those that are still in darkness, that is our desire to, to share the, the, the power of the sacrifice, the power of Jesus in walking in the light. And to assure them that whatever baggage they have, whatever sin they carry, 
whatever brokenness they feel, that Jesus is sufficient to forgive, heal, and restore. They just need to repent and turn to him. And to come sometimes with a broken heart, to come with a joyous heart, to come however they want, but as long as they come to Jesus and accept the forgiveness that he offers through the completed work of his sacrifice. And maybe you're joining us online and watching it and you're feeling the, the, the fullness of, of, of the brokenness in your life. Then know that you can turn to Jesus and just simply believe that he died for you and wants to set you free. And to read 1 John in your context and to know that you can have fellowship with Jesus and to be purified by his blood. So as we reflect upon this day, I guess as I was thinking about this and preparing for this morning, it's just how powerful this piece of scripture truly is. And how simple it really is. To know that as Jesus died for us, he died for the sin of all humanity. And simply those who repent and believe that they receive the payment in full for their sin. Simple as that. Yes, yeah, the most powerful thing in all of creation. When those goats were chosen, they really didn't have a choice. <laughs> you know, they were simply the best of the flock. Another life lesson there, right? If you want to be the best, be careful. You know, if you, if you want if you want to look the best and be the in best shape and all that sort of thing, be careful. Those are the ones that were picked first for some pretty nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> Jesus wasn't chosen. It wasn't like there was a lineup in heaven and said, okay, which one of you is going to go down? It was the only Son of God who voluntarily came to die for you and me. That's love. And it's out of that love that draws us out of darkness into that marvelous light. That doesn't make us feel guilty or judged, but loved and motivated by that love to change. And that love is power. And so many people are searching for that love. And we, the followers of Jesus, have the privilege to take it into the world by how we act, by how we treat others, by how we live our life, by how we live out, by following Jesus and the words that we use and be able to invite them into fellowship with him that they can receive the same power of forgiveness that you and I have received. And to know that in that moment of saying, Jesus, I believe in you. You have paid the price for my sin. Thank you that you are cleansed. Better than tied. And once and for all. Let us pray. Father, as we reflect on this piece of scripture, it is a powerful one. And to think year after year, as the nation of Israel would come and they would offer these sacrifices in your presence, they would go into the tabernacle and, and to sprinkle this blood before your presence. To seek your forgiveness for their sin. 
that they were really foreshadowing the death of Jesus. The necessity for a sacrifice. And that he would be the final one to die for the sins of the world. Jesus, thank you for willingly coming to die for us. Thank you for for enduring those beatings, for having the sin of the world placed upon you, for shedding your life, your blood, so that we may live. Thank you for the victory you demonstrated over the grave to prove to to us and, and before your Father that your sacrifice was sufficient. That all the sin of the world is paid for in full. And it is there for anyone who will simply confess that you are Lord and want to turn from darkness into your marvelous light and have sweet fellowship with you. Jesus, we pray that we would learn to walk in the power of that forgiveness as well. And may we have the privilege to share the great message of your love to the world in which we live in. So bless us on this day as we reflect upon your sacrifice for our sin. In Jesus' name, amen.
Gracious God, as we prepare to depart, I just pray that maybe this week that someone would feel the, the power of forgiveness. That right now they feel the weight of the sin of the world upon them. And may they realize that, that God, that they can take that weight and just place it on Jesus. And he is sufficient for all of their needs. And may they feel the newness that only Jesus can bring into their life through the power of forgiveness. So bless us as we go throughout this week, God. May we be mindful of who we once were, but also celebrate the new creation that we are in Jesus. In your name we pray, amen.